Hi everybody and welcome. Just one more video before we get started. I'm going to cover some tips for pixel art and also for digital art in general. Normally I would give these tips later on in the course, but because we'll be learning more about all of these tips throughout the lessons and applying them in the course project, I think it's best if we talk about them first and try to bear them in mind throughout the course. These tips are pretty handy, but just taken by themselves are not going to help you. So try to apply these tips while you work on the course project. Incidentally, if you're finding this video helpful, you could consider having a look at the entire course on Udemy or Skillshare. See the link in the description. So anyway, let's get started with tip number one. Get a feel for color. Certain colors in a scene go well together and other colors don't. There is a certain amount of color theory out there to give you handy guides, but in my experience, the best way to learn about dealing with color is just to get a feel for it as you practice. You can also look at real life for inspiration. When you're walking around, you might see a beautiful sunset and ask yourself, why is this so beautiful? Or when you're in the nature, you can have a look and say, wow, this is so beautiful, but why? So what I'm doing, what I am going to do in this project is I'm going to use a basic nature combination, which is basically blue, brown, and green. You can use color theory too, but in my experience, it's better not to let the color theory dictate the colors you choose, but just let it guide you. One of the things we are going to learn in this course, by the way, is how to use screen and multiply to pick effective highlighting and shading colors in a simple way. Next, when it comes to pixel art in particular, but also digital art in general, it's quite useful to zoom in and out quite often. When you are focused on individual pixels or when you are focused on details, you can often lose perspective of the drawing as a whole. It's a good idea to get a refresh on your perspective by quickly zooming out, taking a step back, and having a look at the picture as a whole. Tip number three, keep it simple. Us human beings can be quite complicated sometimes, and we generally try to improve things by adding more detail, a more level of complexity. But sometimes it's a good idea to just Keep things as simple as possible, go back to the very basics, and don't overcomplicate things too much. This is particularly true for pixel art, where you only have a limited amount of pixels available to you, but in digital art in general too, because you don't want to add too many details who are all competing for the attention of the viewer. Tip number four. Understand your basic forms and think about your basic lighting theory. Related to the previous tip, it can be extremely valuable to break things down into uh, basic forms and use that to guide what you're drawing. Basic forms obviously don't exist by themselves, but you need light to see them. And the way the light interacts with the environment and with the basic forms is quite useful in learning how to draw not only pixel art, but also digital art in general. You can find a lot about how to draw basic forms online, and you can even find a lot of nice references about drawing basic forms in pixel art. Just search for it in your favorite search engine. Tip number five, experiment. Play around with it. Don't expect to get everything right the first time. Digital art can often be an iterative process. In other words, you try something and then adapt it and then adapt it again and adapt it again and keep adapting until you get something which you're more or less satisfied with. The key phrase here though is more or less. You don't have to be 100% satisfied with it because that can take up a lot of time. You should be experimenting around and having fun with it, but if you stop having fun and you start getting frustrated, it's probably best to move on to the next part of the picture. Tip number six, practice makes perfect, but don't be a perfectionist. Obviously, the more you practice, the better you get, 
but you want to try to practice in a cost-effective way. Sometimes you can get so hung up on getting one detail right that it's going to cost you a lot of time, and at the end of the day, you could have better spent that time learning something else. Remember, it's better to get a report card of straight Bs than get a report card with one A double plus and the rest Cs. Tip seven, use reference and copy other artists. It can be fun to try to draw from the imagination, but it's really hard. So as a beginner, you really want to study reference pictures. You don't need to be too complicated, just uh, find the basic shapes and basic forms. And it's also pretty useful to try to copy exactly what other artists are doing. In this way, you can learn a lot about different styles. But remember, that is only for practicing. Don't reproduce another artist's picture as exactly as possible and then say that you are the one that drew that. No, you might have technically drawn it, but you didn't come up with the idea yourself. And tip number eight, cheat. We are really fortunate that we live in an age of computers and digital painting and we can use all the tools of the computer available to us to improve our work. Just think of just zooming and using layers is a huge advantage over the traditional forms of art. Because it's a big advantage, some people would maybe consider that cheating. I don't really agree. I think it's just utilizing the software to the maximum possible ability. That said, when it comes to practicing, it can be quite useful to not cheat because that makes your life a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. And as we make things a little more challenging for ourselves, we learn more. But when it comes to producing a final product, why make your own life harder when you can also make your own life easier? And that's why I say just use the software tools as much as possible. We are going to learn a few so-called cheats in this chapter. For example, how to use screen and multiply to pick shading and highlighting colors. So that's it from me for now. In the next video, we are going to get started with Krita. See you soon. Bye-bye.